Who's ever eaten at an In-N-Out burger? First time I was at In-N-Out Burger, a friend of mine said, any guy that would write a best-selling book called Enjoy the Ride needs to go to the place that enjoys the ride better than anybody else in any industry. And I said, what are you talking about? Let me share this with the Old Dominion. You want to go to great? Enjoy the ride. You want to enjoy the ride? Check your passion every day. First time I ever was in an In-N-Out Burger, I was in Los Angeles. I got in a car, a rental car. I pulled up, and here's what the kid said to me. You ready for this? Welcome to In-N-Out Burger. I'm Bradley, and I'm going to take your order when you're ready. I was scared. I understood him. He was articulate. He had energy, and I could hear the smile. I mean, what are we used to? You ever been to a fast food restaurant hear this? I tell you, Ollie. You have no idea what they're saying. I tell you, Ollie. Yeah. Then you pull around. You give the knucklehead. That your order's 1050. Your order's 952. You give him 1052. Don't mess with him. If it's 952, just give him a 10 and leave. Just roll. Don't, don't. Do not make this kid drink. Don't give him 1052 if it's 952. I did that one time at McDonald's. You know what the kid did to me? I gave him 1052. My order's 952. Gave me back two fives. <laughs> and I gave him a look. And he said, oh, I'm sorry that I short you. I said, yeah, another five. <laughs> and then they gave me a customer comment card. I, I wrote right on it the truth. Best service I ever had. <laughs> but anyways, this kid said to me, as I pulled up, he said, hi, my name is Bradley. I'll take your order when you're ready. He said, look over our comprehensive, extensive menu board. Do not let it intimidate you in any way. There's three items. I said, how about a double, double fries and a chocolate shake? He said, hey, good order. Here's the way it's going to work. I'm going to run the numbers. Boop, just did 461. You're going to pull around to window number one. You're going to give me a five. I'm going to give you back 39 cents. I am Bradley. I'm waiting at window number one. I cannot wait to meet you. Get your car around here. I got around here, you know, he said, how you doing? I said, you're freaking me out. <laughs> but then he did something you have to do to be great. Old Dominion, you want to be great? Here's how you be great. Or I would say become greater. You become greater by doing what? Every day you wake up, you leverage every opportunity and you leverage every resource. Every opportunity, every resource. As a sales and marketing guy, one of the things that I've always said, even to the people that work in our corporation, is I said, leverage every opportunity, every opportunity. You see, there's an opportunity in everything. It's when you talk to a person like Chip, and Chip is the person that selects you to speak. Do you not think of an opportunity that maybe 51 weeks from now when he receives a card that on the outside that says, one year ago, and he opens it up and it says, I had the pleasure of speaking at your conference in Orlando, Florida. Thank you so much. I look forward to our paths crossing again. Well, why would I do that? There's an opportunity again to make an impression, to put my name in front of that person. For him to say, wow, he was good on stage, but he was just as good off stage. To have the production crew say, he didn't even so much as want a bottle of water. You see, sometimes we have opportunities, but we're so busy getting down into the mud, we don't see them. You leverage the opportunities and the resources. What's your greatest resource? I'm looking at it. The right people. Here's what he said next to me. He said, sir, are you going to eat this in a car or take it with you? I said, well, I'm in the car. Let's go with option B, in the car. He said, then you'll need one of these. He handed me a paper lap mat, a paper lap mat. He looks at me, he says, sir, I'm not suggesting you're sloppy, but if you're going to eat in the car, put that on your lap. First bite, head south, we've got you covered. I looked, and there was marketing, there was advertising, there was a toll-free number, and I thought how brilliant that was. The brilliancy of it was I sat and stared at the number. I put it in speed dial. How good is speed dial with In-N-Out Burger? They don't advertise that much. I just simply got into Sacramento one night. Remember, I had in and out Burger because of the mat. I dialed the number. A voice said, thank you for calling in and out Burger. What's your location? Yeah, that's what the toll-free number was for. I said, I'm coming out of the Sacramento airport. Hey, if you get on Interstate 5, you're about 16 miles from the first exit that will have one of our shops. By the way, what's your favorite? I said, Double Double. She said, good choice. She said, you have a beautiful evening. And she said, thanks for being loyal to in and out Burger. Wow. Well, anyways, I gave old Goofy the $5, and I might as well say Goofy since I'm down in Orlando. It's a character. Stay with me. <laughs> Have a magical moment. <laughs> it's kind of like when you call the front desk and say, I don't have a shower curtain. That's what it, that happened to me. He said, are you sure? I said, well, is there another place you've got them put? 
He said, could you check again? I went in there and all I saw was the rings. I come back, I said, no, just some rings, just rings. Have a magical day. And I'm like, all right. It'll be a magical morning, that's all I know. Look at the Disney people in the room. Ooh. Well, have you ever gone to a place and they said, do you have a reservation? Isn't that the dumbest thing to say? You got a reservation. One time I was in Pierre, South Dakota. I'd flown all day from Chicago to Denver to Pier. And the kid said, you got a reservation? I said, no. I flew from Chicago, then to Denver, laid over for a couple more hours, then flew into Pier, waited 55 minutes for your van to bring me here, brought all my luggage in. Just say hi to you. Well, Bradley took my five. He gave me back 39. I went to the second window, and there she was, Gracie, who smiled. said, hey, how you doing? I said, I'm doing great, Gracie. At this moment, I'm like freaked out. I'm thinking I've never been to a drive through fast food restaurant with such friendly service. And I got there, and she said, you're going to eat this in the car, correct? I said, yes, I am. She said, you've got a double-double fries and a chocolate shake. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, let me give you your milkshake first. Get it situated in your cup holder before I hand you anything else. How many of you ever been to a drive through They hand you the bag, the change, the re you're like, you're like, hey, thanks a lot, appreciate this, yeah. Let me just pull out with my knee. <laughs> she handed me my milkshake, the straw was already in it. Great, right? She handed me that milkshake, the straw was already in it, there was a paper top on, I got it situated, and she gave me my order, it was in a box. My, my order was in a box. Why would they put it in a bag if you're going to eat in the car? They put it in a box, and I've got witnesses know that double double is wrapped in such a way, ready for my first bite. There was fries in the side with a thing, a container, a ketchup. I had one question for her. I said, can I ask you a question, Gracie? She said, absolutely. I said, am I still in the United States of America? <laughs> I had Alex with me. Now, those of you, you're going to appreciate this, especially this is a North Carolina story. Alex, back when he was 12 years old, I am just freshly married, right? And old Alex says to me, Poppy, I want to go with you. And he's 12, and I said, yeah, that's fine. And he goes, but I don't want mom to go. I just want it to be me and you to an event. He said, I, I, I want to see what you do. I said, all right. So we're getting ready to pull out of the house, and we're going down the highway, Interstate 40, towards Asheville, North Carolina. I was going to speak over there at the Grove Park Inn. Next thing I know, he says, hey, Poppy, can we stop at McDonald's? I said, absolutely, bud. 12 years old, new stepdad. I'm going to build a yeah, relationship. Yeah. I said, absolutely. You keep your eyes open for one. Morganton, North Carolina, exit 105 off of Interstate 40. We pulled into McDonald's, and as we're pulling off the exit ramp, a 12-year-old looks at me and says, hey, Poppy. I said, what, buddy? He goes, will you do that thing you do at the drive-thru if they don't have passion or enjoying the ride? I said, where did we come up with all this? He said, I heard it on your CD. Now I want to see you do it live. I said, all right, bud, we'll do it. Because I'm thinking, hey, I haven't done in North Carolina, but maybe about nine months. So I'm thinking everybody's friendly down there, right? Passion. They don't hire people that don't know what they're doing. I pulled into Morgan in North Carolina, that McDonald's at exit 105, and here's what the kid said. And remember, the deal was I'd do what I usually do. The kid said this, I tell you, Ali, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> so I gave the kid my order. I said, I want a chicken. Frick. I never get his response. And by the way, I got a theory. If I don't understand you, I'm going to go ahead and mess with you. He said, he said, I said, I want a chicken. He said, I understand what you said. You your order. He said, you want a chicken. Wait to hear what he said next. Pull her on or something wrong with the speaker. Little did that man know. Alex hit the floor. He is on the floor. He's under the glove compartment on the passenger side going, no, 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 don't go to the window. Just go, go, go. I said, you got us started in this. We're going all the way. <laughs> we get up to that window and the kid says, so, buddy, man, what do you need? I couldn't resist. I went, I want a cheat. And fake. Go. <laughs> Alex said, just pull out. We pulled out. We're sitting in the parking lot. We've been to a speaker and a window. We got no food. I look at a 12-year-old who's done yucking it up. Oh, he wasn't being funny anymore. I said, what did you get so serious for? I said, by the way, what are we doing? He said, I'll tell you what we're doing. I might be only 12, but I do know this. If the person packing our food doesn't think you're funny, I'm not eating it. <laughs> Lessons learned, wisdom learned. Every day you wake up, check your passion. You got that passion. My neighbor I was telling you about, when I first moved in, I'll never forget, he come up through the cul-de-sac and he had a ball cap on. I couldn't see from a distance. John Deere. 
He looked at me, he said, you got a pretty big lawn there. I said, yeah. He said, what are you going to cut it with? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I noticed when you move in, you didn't have a riding mower. I said, how did you know that? He said, I watched you. I said, yeah, I said, the place I came from, I didn't need to, didn't need to have a mower. He said, well, I hope you're not going to get one of them fancy smancy lawn service. Do your lawn. And you get yourself a John Deere. His whole neighborhood's green. He said, matter of fact, I'll take you by one. I'm like, man, what a nice neighbor. What a good guy. 6.30 the next morning, which was a Saturday. You know what I'm talking about. Like when Chip says, breakfast is at 6. You're like, are you kidding me? Are you serious? He's honking a horn. I get out there and I get in his truck and we're going along. We passed Home Depot and Lowe's. And I finally looked at him and I said, where are we going? I said, they sell lawnmowers in there. They don't sell lawn. They sell baby tractors. Just old loving them baby tractors. He said, we're going to Smitherman's. I said, what's a Smitherman, John Deere dealer? I said, what's the difference between their tractors and Home Depot and Lowe's? He said, I'm going to be very candid with you. About $6,000. <laughs> he wasn't lying either. Now, I'll never forget that day. I'm kicking tires and looking at these John Deere's, and all of a sudden I find the one I like, the John Deere X540. You see, you got to check your passion even when you cut grass, because I had a plan, man. If I'm going to cut grass, I'm going to have fun cutting grass. I'm going to enjoy the ride. Passion of even cutting grass. He said, What do you like about that one? He's talking about the ball bearings, the differential, the wheel. Ba- I had no idea what he was talking about. He said, What do you like best about it? I said, It's got a cup holder. He said, I swear, you're picking a lawnmower because it's got a cup holder? I said, I've never had a lawnmower with a cup holder. He said, you got a push mower. It wouldn't have a cup holder. I said, mine did. <laughs> I had one dangling down there. But anyways, I buy this mower. First time I cut grass, he come running through the cul-de-sac. He is up in my driveway. He said, what were you doing? I said, I'll tell you what I was doing. Cutting grass. He said, yeah, but your wife was in the side yard. Your wife was in the front yard. Your wife was chasing you around. And you had your hat on forward, hat on backwards, hat on forward. Good night, he said. It looked like a race, and she was trace chasing you. I said, Bruce, I said, let me tell you something about me. I love life, and I like to enjoy the ride. So if I'm going to cut grass, I'm going to even do that with passion. I said, you see that cup holder there? When that long neck went empty, I put my hat on backwards. <laughs> that sent my wife a signal. It's like the bat beam saying, your baby needs one. And she ran me another. He said, your hat's on crooked. What's that mean? Time for me to stop cutting grass. <laughs> yep. You put that hat on backwards too many times, you'll run over your neighbor's shrubs. <laughs> Not that I've ever done that. But you got to check your past. You know what else you got to do? Here's what you got to do. And, and I tell people this, and I see a little silver on some of your hair, some of you I don't see any. I mean, yeah, let me share this with you. When I told somebody just last night I got two grandsons, I, I, it's like it can't even come out of my mouth. Like, I got grandsons. I still feel like I'm about 35. But let me share this with you. No regrets, but I'm going to give you a piece of advice, and this came from Margaret one day. She said, you need to cure your destination disease. You see, what ends up happening in life is we don't enjoy our successes. I tell people this, you live more for today, less for tomorrow, never about yesterday. You know the kind of salespeople, you know the kind of people I like to be around? People that are real. People that are real. I want genuine. I want to know that you care. I want to know that when you're talking to me, you're asking what I'm saying. I want to know, like in a conversation last night, if I'm talking to somebody, I want them to know that I will remember the fact that they have two dogs and two cats, a son that's married. I'll listen attentively. Why? Because it was a part of my life where I didn't enjoy the ride. And guess what it was? It was just a ride. It was all about that. It was just a ride. I tell people, live more for today and less for tomorrow and never about yesterday. When Mo Money was out here, my first thought was, Mo, you give it to him. Give it to him. Get him all fired up. But just remember, enjoy these things. Enjoy tonight. Enjoy what they put together for you. The job that they've done to make sure that they acknowledge where you're at and where you're heading. You see, I tell people this, if you will learn to cure your destination disease, life becomes so much sweeter. What am I talking about? Well, let's take what Paul McCartney said. Paul McCartney in an interview was said, do you have any regrets? He said, no. He said, I have one wish. He said, the only thing I ever wished was that we could go do one more tour and make one more album with the original Beatles. 
Stunned, the reporter said, what would the tour be? What would the album be? He said, it's not what it would be. It's how we'd make it. He said, it'd be the first time we ever made an album that I actually enjoyed making it, and I wasn't thinking about the next project. He said, on tour, he said, I would absolutely enjoy the cities. Last night, I attended your reception. I mentioned that already. Last night, I flew a friend, Bruce, my neighbor down. If you didn't know me 10 years ago, none of that would have happened. What I'm trying to say is I'd have checked into my hotel. I'd have went to my room. I might have ordered room service. I, I wouldn't have done those things, but you know what I do now? I'm going to live at large. I'm going to come to your event. Why? Because I get a chance to do something I should have done even 10 years ago. Live more for today, less for tomorrow. Get out of your room. Go meet some fun people. Enjoy the ride. When McCartney said that, I will never forget thinking when he said, this time we would enjoy making the album. We wouldn't be thinking about the next one. Last night I was asked by somebody, now, now where do you speak next? And I honest to goodness said to them, and it is gospel. I said, I won't look at that probably until sometime Sunday morning. You see, I'm not going to get beyond today. I am here in Orlando, Florida. I'm with Old Dominion. That's, that's what I'm going to do today. And I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy the fellowship of some of you. But I never used to do that. How many ever done this in your life? How many ever said, boy, if I could just make it to Friday. Boy, if we can get through Friday. If we can get through this first quarter. We get this first quarter under our belt. Boy, we got to get through this. We get through this year. Boy, if we finally get this paid for. You ever say that in your personal life? We ever get, boy, if we can get them out of high school. If I could just get them through college. I used to say about Josh, if I could just get Josh married. My mother goes, we do not need Josh married. I said, why? Because he'll bring back more. <laughs> no act least like him. It was always, what was next? 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 You can't enjoy the ride like that. I try to tell people, you enjoy the ride by making sure you cure your destination disease. I was in Seattle, Washington. A man walked up to me. He shook my hand several years ago, and as he shook my hand, he said, young man, I wish I'd have heard you 31 years ago. I said, how so, sir? He said, 31 years ago, my wife passed away. I said, I'm sorry. He said, no. He said, I'm, I'm stopping to talk to you because I've got three daughters that live on the East Coast that I don't get to see. He said, you know how many times on the way to work is instead of enjoying the ride to work, I was too busy thinking about what I had to do when I got there? He said, how many times at lunchtime, and instead of enjoying my lunch, I was too busy thinking about what I'd do after lunch. A tear started to come down his cheek when he said, do you know how many times I sat with my wife, who's been gone 31 years, and my three girls who don't live close to me? Do you know how many times I sat at dinner, and uppermost in my mind was what I had to do after dinner? He's a young man, I'm 97 years old. I can tell you I've officially lived my life 30 minutes ahead. He squeezed my hand. He said, I'm going to give you a piece of advice. He said, it's going to be two sentences, short sentences. One's going to end a period, and one's going to end an exclamation point. He said, first sentence is this, life is short. He said, second sentence is, enjoy the ride. I got on an airplane. I rode down, enjoy the ride. Are you? And I started thinking about my life and my kids where I couldn't wait for them to get out of Little League. I couldn't wait for them to get through the politics of high school sports. And today... Anybody in this room know what I'd pay and give for one more Friday night high school football game? I'd give everything I own just for one more time. For those lights, half them not even working to be on at that stadium, bare spots in the stadium, but to see my number 10 standing there in the end zone. Now that number 10 is 31 years old. And too many times, what do we do? We just hurried up, hurried up, hurried up, hurried up, hurried up. Anybody in this room ever been on vacation? with a person who has the destination disease. Oh, they're fun. Mm, mm, mm. You see what happens when you're on a person with a vacation? Here's what happens. They'll start barking orders, and usually it's the men. Yeah, you're going, oh, here's what we're going to do. Vacation this year. We're going to leave in the middle of the night, about 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm not going to drive in the heat of the day, and I'm not going to drive in traffic. I'm going to make sure that we get a jump on this. We'll get about three hours on the road. Get an igloo cooler. For what? We need an igloo cooler. I'm figuring about 20 sandwiches, maybe 20 cans of soda. Slide a Budweiser in there if the trip gets too tough. <laughs> we'll leave about 3 o'clock in the morning. We've got a 16-hour drive. We're not stopping. Because we're on vacation! 
and we're going to have fun. You get down to Disney and the first thing they do is start barking out orders again. We'll get up at 6.30. We're on vacation. We got the Mickey lot. We got to get to the Mickey lot by 8. We want to be the first one in the park. He said, my goodness gracious, if we're going to pay 64.50 times 6 to get us into that park, we're going to get in there and enjoy it. He said, I've even got it mapped out. He said, I went online. Here's what I did. I got her mapped out. We're going to go ahead and go to the front, the back rides to the left. You know, in retail, everybody goes right, so we'll follow suit. We'll go left. We hit the back three rides to the left, back of the park. We get those first. There's 21 rides. I'm estimating about 18 minutes to ride. We may not be able to eat. But we're going to ride them all because we're on vacation and we're going to have fun. You get home from a week's vacation. Hey, guys, here's what happens. Your neighbor comes over, talks to your wife, says, how was your vacation? Would you like to know what your wife says? You go with him next year. You think he's so wonderful? You go. And how do I know this? I used to take two boys from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. That's 10 hours and 18 minutes. One year I made it 10 hours and 12 minutes. My record, 10 hours even. We left at 3 o'clock in the morning, me and two boys. I'd take two sleeping kids from in the back seat. And I'd tell Josh, pack, pee, shut up, get in. Boom, drove down. I made one mistake in all my years of vacation as a single parent with my two boys. When the boys were 13 and 15, I took my mom. Now the good news is that year we made it home in nine hours. <laughs> I never drove so fast to get a person out of a car in my life. We actually stopped at a rest stop in Virginia. I said, let's go. Stephen said, Granny's not in the car. I said, let's roll. <laughs> and then there's Josh, chip off the old block. He goes, yeah, we'll get her next year. <laughs> I said, I was only kidding. Two hours north of Myrtle Beach after that week, my mother was staring out the window and tears were flowing down her face. And I finally said, Mom, are you going to talk to me? And she said, I'm waiting for the boys. I wanted them to fall asleep. I said, what's going on, Mom? She said, your boys and my grandsons are 13 and 15. She said, I saw myself this week. I said, how so, Mom? She said, Josh got off the bumper cars at NASCAR Park. He dove back in line. You said, Josh, what are you doing? Dad, there's no line. Let's ride him again. You looked at him and you said, Josh, look at the size of this park. Look how many rides there are. Why don't we go ahead and ride a bunch of other things? We'll come back and do it again. She said, when you were five and your brother was seven, we entered Kennywood Amusement Park outside of Pittsburgh. You jumped on the merry-go-round, you and your brother. You got off the merry-go-round. You dove back in line. And I looked at you and said, Stephen, what are you doing? Big old smile. You said, Mommy, I want to ride it again. I made you the same promise you made Josh. I promised you that we'd ride a whole lot of other rides and I'd take you back. And as tears streamed down her face, she said, and just like you, I never did. She said, you got to learn something that I never learned. And I said, what's that, Mom? People always ask me the origin of some of the trademarks, some of the book chapters, titles. Well, this one's from my mom. When she looked at me driving north, and she said, you need to learn to enjoy the ride. I said, wow, it's true. I said, Mom, we just seemed to go, what this, you know, I said, it was almost like the vacation was an initiative and I got to take the boys and blah, blah. She said, just learn to enjoy the ride. Well, we talked the whole way home and the next morning I called her. You're going to like this. I said, Mom, thank you so much. I said, I'm going to learn to enjoy the ride. She said, good. She said, I've been doing a lot of thinking what we should do as a family next year when all of us go back to Myrtle Beach together. <laughs> she said, we'll leave at seven like a normal family. We're not the Colts leaving Baltimore in the middle of the night. <laughs> Takes a little bit of time to write this stuff, you know. <laughs> she said, we'll leave at seven like a normal family. She said, we're not packing no food either. She said, we'll eat breakfast out, lunch out, we'll stop. Maybe there's a craft fair we should go to. Hey, why go to the beach in the ocean and get there when you can shop for beads and yarn halfway down? She said, there's one more thing. When we get down there, you let the boys sit down at the beach as long as they want. Last year was like the military police. We had to be up from the beach at 4.30. Every, everybody was up at the beach at 4.30. Everybody had to be shy by 5.15. We were in a car at 5.30. We had a reservation at 6. Good night. So let them stay at the beach as long as they want. When they're done, they'll come up, and that's when we'll go eat. And she said, and let them pick where we eat. Fancy, smanchy restaurants we went. I had that. I said, what? 
That mahi, I said, mahi, mahi. She said, well, whatever it was, it tastes like fried Nerf balls. I said, it's a nice fish. She said, fish. She said, Long John Silver's got good fish. I said, all right, Mom, we're good at Long John's. Well, anyways, we pulled out at 7.07, and I was ticked off. We are seven minutes off my newly adjusted schedule. But it got worse. 90 minutes out of Pittsburgh from the back seat, a 14-year-old named Josh. I said, hey, Dad, did you see that billboard? Mr. Sports. I said, what's that? He goes, there's batting cages at the next exit. We could hit for an hour. My mother. <laughs> 15 hours and 50 minutes later, we arrived in Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> Wouldn't even make it to Myrtle Beach. We're walking into the Marriott in downtown Richmond. My mother goes, oh, this is kind of fun. This wasn't planned. I said, I prepaid for a condo. We've got two rooms tonight. Oh. I've never heard of that. We're on the elevator. She looks at me. She goes, you seem sad. I go, Mom. I go, you're not. She goes, enjoy the ride. <laughs> Next day we get up. We pulled into a bank at Myrtle Beach. My mother goes, what are we doing at the bank? I said, let me put it to you this way. We is defined by you, you, and you. Spent all of my cash yesterday on the journey down. You know what she said to me? Well, that was poor planning. It's the first night. I wish you'd been with us. Oh, yeah, first night. 7.30. Hey, why eat at 6 when you can push her back till 7.30? No, no, no. That's when we're leaving for the restaurant. I said to Stephen, I go, where are we going to eat? Now, I'm going to tell you what I like. I like seafood. You know, I like lobster. I like crab. I like bisque. And my oldest boy knows my favorite restaurant in Myrtle Beach. I'm thinking he's going to treat old dad. I said, where are we going to eat, buddy? He said, Dad, I've been thinking all day since it's my first night to pick. He said, I, I got kind of a hankering for pancakes. <laughs> I said, pancakes? He said, I saw an IHOP on the way in. I said, IHOP? You know, my mother said, IHOP. We went to IHOP. Well, I have she crab soup, and you can have blueberries on your pancakes. <laughs> it's the second night I wish you'd been with us. Remember Josh? Oh, yeah. It's his turn to pick. It's now 8 o'clock. I don't care where we eat. We can go back to IHOP for all I care. I am starving. I'm looking for crackers that were left over from the year before. I finally looked at him at 8 p.m. And I looked and I said, with his King James Version grandmother within 10 feet. And by the way, you haven't been so hungry you don't care where you eat. Seriously. You're just starving. You ever check into a hotel? You know, you're like walking down the hallway and you see that one tray out by somebody's room and you're... And your wife's like, get away from that. I'm like, I swear, they didn't touch that bread, honey. I know they didn't touch that bread. Look at that jello. They, ain't, they don't even have the plastic off that. <laughs> Not that I've ever done that. <laughs> Look at some of you going, I have. <laughs> you drink enough, you'll eat anything. <laughs> well, anyways, I was starving. I finally looked at him. I said, all right, Josh, have you picked? He goes, Dad, you're going to like this. I'm like, yay. He said, all right, Hooters. And I'm trying to see where my mother was. I said, Hooters? He goes, yeah, Hooters, Dad. They got good wings. <laughs> my mother said, Hooters. I'm like, Mom, do you know what Hooters is? She said, I have no earthly idea. What do they specialize in? <laughs> We're going to the car. Josh said, man, Dad, Grandma should have brought her Bible. <laughs> And then we pulled into Hooters at North Myrtle Beach. I'm going to tell you something. It gets better because here's what happened next. She looked at the sign as we pulled in. She said, oh, I get it. I said, what's that, Mom? She said, owls. <laughs> Josh said, that's right, Granny. Hoo, hoo, hoo. And I don't cross lines as a professional speaker. So you're going to have to read between the line on what happened next. I walked into Hooters. And the most overqualified employee greeted us. 